those are just names that I, I put right here. Your peer details are going to be completely specific to the SIP provider that you you purchase your um, numbers from. So you're going to want to pick people, providers who know and are familiar with Trixbox. Otherwise, they're not going to have the correct peer data details to give you. CBON had some, but it was a little bit of a, a wrestling match to get those set up. So. If you have a CB on SIP trunk and you need help setting those up, feel free to email me or call me. I can help you with that um, because CB on, not all of their technicians know what needs to go here, but they will be able to give you the basic information: um, your host, username, secret, and your type. All of those are absolutely necessary. So, and there there are actually many more than that. Um, DTMF settings I mean there, there's so many things that you need to put there uh, authentication your diversion header information like a from user would be put here in the peer details um, that's advanced stuff I'll, I can cover it if you need help with it like I said incoming settings your user details down here towards the bottom um, those are also very important user context is usually left blank but your user details um, you, you will need to get that from your SIP provider as well. And then your register string. Without this, you're not going to be able to make calls or receive calls. You're not going to be able to register the SIP trunk, which means no joy, no phone calls, no nothing. Your PBX is basically a brick until you have this register string, and you have to get that from your SIP provider. Okay, so that's going to be a basic trunk setup. Once you have a trunk set up, then you need to configure outbound routes to use that trunk. So, let's go ahead and click on Outbound Routes. Let's move up to the top. Okay. So you can see we have two routes set up here. Now, the order in which you wish these routes to be used is specified by how high they are in this chain. Okay. So, you, you want to make sure that you keep that in mind. You, you can configure a, ver a variety of options based on the number of routes you have daisy chained together. Route name, that's just going to be generic like Houston and then see beyond. Those are two different route names. And then a password, if you want to configure a password so that in order for somebody, say an extension, number 100 wants to dial out and they want to use this, this Houston SIP trunk to dial out. Well, if you want, if you want them to use a, a password just for security reasons, you could put it here. But that's kind of a pain. Most of the time, you're going to leave that blank. Um, emergency dialing. If you had a route, route password, you could check that, and then it would allow them to dial 911 even if they didn't have a route password. So that's kind of a good deal. Or if you wanted specific phones within your organization to only be used, um, say they're heavily trafficked areas. If, if you want people with the route password to be able to use the phones to dial out, but you want everybody else to just be able to call extensions within the company, you can set a route password and you can select intercompany route and accomplish it that way. Music on hold, um, you, you can actually, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. When people get put on hold, you can upload your own tracks or you can use the default tracks. Um, to play during the time that they're on hold. Uh, dial patterns. Now these are important. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to show you some dial patterns that are in use in one of these specific trunks here. Okay. Now, as you can see, you've got the name set up, no password, all that stuff I talked about. Now, you'll notice that there's a period right here. That period isn't there by accident and you're not going to see it in yours. That period means the CBeyond route can be used to dial any call. Okay, Any phone number that anybody puts in, the CBeyond trunk and route are available for use. That's what the period means. Um, you can put a variety of things in there, but if you look at your dial patterns wizard, this isn't going to be covered. So that period is, is kind of a useful thing to know. Um, trunk sequence. I have it set. I have two trunks available. Remember we, we talked about that? Um, I only want this route with all numbers available 
to be used by the CB on trunk. So I'm not going to go. I'm not going to put a second backup trunk here. But if if we're talking about trunk failures and you want failover for a company, um, this is how you would set it up. And let's go ahead and click on the other route to give you some more information. Okay. Now um, this particular route we set up to specify a a number on the caller ID to show up for only, all right, say that they've got a call center in um, Oklahoma, okay? The numbers that are local in Oklahoma are all gonna be using the CB on outbound route. Well, if they wanted to show up on the caller ID as a local number, because as you know, most of the time, I don't know, well, I don't know about you, but whenever I receive a call from an area code that I don't recognize, I let it go to voicemail. I ignore it because I don't know who they are and they're probably just a telemarketer. If you want to show up as a local phone call when you're calling customers back, this is where you'd set that up, okay? Um, your outbound routes. And in this particular case, I have it set to where in the dial patterns here, anyone who dials area code 281-713 or 832 is going to use this route, okay? So that's being specific, very specific in a route. You notice that I put a period in the C beyond outbound route. That's for everything. Houston is only going to be used when they're dialing Houston. Okay? So this is a very useful thing to know. Um, and you'll also notice here that I have this set up for failover. So if they're calling Houston using the next Tiva trunk, which is the one that has the Houston phone number associated with their account um, and it fails, it's going to go over to the C Beyond and make an outbound call anyway. It's just going to show a different caller ID. Okay, so that's how you would set up trunks and outbound routes. Um, the third thing that you're going to absolutely have to set up is extensions. So let's go there. All right, if you look at extensions here, you can see that a whole bunch are set up. Um, they're all fairly generic, so I'm, I'm not gonna go over every specific thing here, but I'll show you the stuff that you absolutely need. You would need an extension, at least one extension, in order to make, make and receive calls. So let's go ahead and, and show you how we'd set that up. We have a display name. We have this SIP alias, which is just going to be, say, the number of the extension, okay, that you want showing up on uh, a caller ID when you're calling from an an in an in company's extension. Outbound CID, um, that's not really anything that you need to specify, um, at least for basic purposes. All of this stuff, ring time, you can do default, or you can change it based on set seconds, okay. So that's useful. Call waiting, call screening, emergency CID, all that stuff. DIDs, that's, those are more advanced things that you can look up or ask me how to set up later. Um, we're not going to cover those today. This device uses SIP technology. Okay, great, fantastic. So um, how did we specify that? Well, when you add an extension, you can choose what type of extension you want to add. And we chose a SIP extension. So it's going to give us these options. Um, most of your soft phones and uh, you, you know your Lin Linksys phones, things like that, are going to be SIP extensions. So you're going to need a secret. That's important. Okay. Your DTM F mode. That's important too because um, when people push buttons on their phone, it's nothing's going to happen if that's set wrong. All right. Secret is your basically your password. Um, that's going to be hard coded into your into your soft phone or your uh, SIP phone. In order to use the PBX, they need to have a secret. So um, that's how, that is important as well. Contacts, can reinvite. All these are basic settings. You don't even actually have to set them up. As soon as you set up a basic extension, it's going to add those things in. Um, your port, you can see. 5060, um, you can change that around if you want. Um, just basically configure it 
to work through your firewall. Um, these are all things that were set up when we configure it as your SIP alias. Okay. That's just to give people a voicemail box um, and then an email box. Okay. Oh, and you can set up deny and permit rules here too. Um, if you don't, if you don't want to worry about other people within the network getting a hold of this information and using it to uh, make calls when they shouldn't be having the authorization, you can allow and deny specific IP addresses to use this information. Dictation services, we're not going to cover that. Um, recording incoming and outgoing calls on demand, okay? That's something that you can to either turn on or off <coughs> all the time here or if it's on set to on demand people can use a code um, while they're talking and it can enable car recording which is a pretty neat feature voicemail and directory now this is going to be important you're going to need to set these things up this voicemail box is not configured okay but if you were to configure it you go to enabled you put in a voicemail password um, you could put in an email address so that they would actually get it and you could set up yes you could set email attachment to yes and that's going to email them whenever they get a voicemail it's going to email a little uh, a copy of the file to them so that they can listen to it in an mp3 um, CID it's going to play the caller ID the envelope um, you don't it, it, that's just date and time settings when it's playing the voicemail message um, this deletes it when it's sent so I mean all of these are fairly self-explanatory and if you read the popovers it's actually going to tell you what they do so moving on your VMX locator settings um, all of these can be user configured in the in the user HUD that I showed you just before we logged in as mate. So you can also set up specific codes here. All right. Um, most of the time, you can just this extension is working. So everything that I've showed you, that's all you really need in order to set up a, a basic extension for use with your PBX. All right. So let's go through these. Oh, feature codes. Now remember how I told you that you could press a specific key combination during a call and use it to record or activate recording well these are where you set all those up and, and it's going to have these are all set up by default um, but you can change them right here so your general settings um, you don't really